Well, hello everyone. This is Al Fadi, and I want to thank you for joining us in this uh, special live uh, uh, edition, basically, of our uh, Let Us Reason live stream. Uh, with me here, a dear brother. Many of you know him, of course, but I'll ask him in a little bit to introduce himself one more time, just in case someone doesn't know anything about his amazing work, of course, and his presence on social media and YouTube. He goes by Rob Christian. And uh, he does a wonderful, wonderful and amazing work in the field of apologetics, especially apologetics to Muslims. He is one of the few who are Arab speakers. You know, uh, I am blessed to be an Arab speaker. He is an Arab speaker. We have Christian Prince, of course, is another Arab speaker. So we're so thankful that we are working in the same field. And I pray for more and more collaborations like this. With that said, I want to thank all of you who have been waiting for us. Thank you for uh, you know your patience, and thank you for those who are joining us or will be joining us. Uh, this is one of those special editions of Let Us Reason live stream, and today's topic is going to be a very interesting one. Uh, you know, and I, that's what I love about Rob. He always brings the controversial uh, topics, and, <laughs> and we are going to tackle it and deal with it. I want to thank the moderators, of course, and I thank uh, those of you for paying attention to what the moderators are going to share with you about the rules. Uh, please stick to the topic. If you have any questions, ask questions related to the topic. Be respectful because you will be removed if you start using profanities or even disregard the rules of this uh, uh, live stream. With that says, uh, I want to turn it over to you, brother. Uh, welcome and uh, thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. God bless you. God bless your audience. Your dear audience who are always here to support all the Warriors in Christ, uh, I want to ask God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to bless everyone who is watching, including the Muslims who might curse us at least 70 times a day. Thank you for being here, and uh, Lord willing, we can have an amazing live show today together. Thank yeah, you. it's amazing you mentioned 70 times a day because uh, my professor, Dr. Brew Baker, just uh, published a video about a week ago where the word, uh, if you ask for forgiveness for them, uh, you know, uh, Allah will not forgive them, even if you ask 70 times, and the word 70 was added later, actually. So just to let you know. <laughs> amazing, amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that says, we chose a topic. I know you told me it's something about worshiping Muhammad. So I, I kind of like asked, uh, you know, this rhetorical questions. Uh, do Muslims worship Muhammad? And Rob, do Muslims worship Muhammad? Because our Muslim friends are in denial when it comes to that topic. Yes. Well, when you ask Muslims, unfortunately, when we go to the Islamic sources, we see over and over and over tons of sources that actually confirm that Muhammad is being worshipped. And on, in some sources, Muhammad is even higher than Allah himself. Uh, maybe uh, Brother Al-Fadi and maybe if the audience are uh, listening and remember what happened during that debate with uh, between Muhammad Hijab and David Wood, when David uh, David Wood said, uh, "Allah prays for, not two. and then later Muhammad Hijab came on and he, he didn't listen carefully to what David Wood said. He said, "Allah prays for, not two. Wait, wait. To who is Allah praying when Allah is praying? I mean, Brother Al Fadi, when you pray, to who do you pray? Well, we, we pray to God because only God listens to our prayers and answers our prayers. Exactly, exactly. When we pray, we pray to our Creator. So when Allah right. is praying, to who is He? Allah uh, is Allah praying? We believe, if we study the source carefully, Allah always praises the Prophet according to Muhammad Hijab. Remember when Muhammad Hijab, no, no, I, I didn't mean to say when he when, when the debate was over, he went to Ghana and he came back and speak to Skoni, he said, no, no, I didn't mean, mean to say that Allah prays for, not to, you know, I meant to say, I made a mistake, I meant to say that Allah praises the Prophet. But wait, Brother yeah. Al-Fadi, if we go to chapter one, ayah two of the Quran, what do we find? We find that it says, Alhamdulillah faqat, all praise to Allah. Be to Allah exactly so instead of doing uh of fixing the problem doing damage control he made it even more worse for his prophet and he proved that Allah is the slave of Muhammad because remember yeah. Hamd is to who only in Islam to Allah so thank you yeah you know uh Rob uh, you know that um uh you know Muhammad Hijab is known for doing damage control right you know recently with the Asr Qadi <laughs> you know mm -hmm. he needs a lot of prayers and his damage control was to cut the section 
of that interview, which made it even more intriguing now for everybody to go and see what exactly was cut out. But anyway, I think Muhammad Hijab needs all the prayers that he can get right now. With that said, what is it? I mean, there is so many things that we can talk about. This is a deep topic and it's a serious topic. And by the way, any Muslim who prays daily knows that they praise and they pray to Muhammad at the conclusion of every prayer. And we're going to talk about this today. So I'm going to, again, uh, ask you, where do you want to go, brother? Because I'm here to serve you, brother. Yes, I gave you a couple of uh, screens. Uh, maybe you can put them. Uh, uh, so which one, which can... one would you like to uh, to show right now? I yeah, mean, uh, can... sure. Maybe you can go uh, to the hadith, uh, that long hadith that I gave you. Uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 4452, uh, 4452 and 4453. It's a long hadith. Uh, it's from Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay, is it is it the one uh, that talks about, um, yes, I, I see it now. Okay, give me a second here. We're going to share our screen mm -hmm. and we are going to go from there, my brother. So, All right. one second. And uh, here it is. And I think people can see it. Can you see it? Uh, maybe if you can make it a little bit bigger, brother. That would uh, be, sure. Uh... Yeah, give me one second here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to find a way to try to make it big. But uh, anyway, you can, uh, if you have it in front of you, uh, please yes. proceed to talk anyway. Uh, so that's yes. why I adjust sure. it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, it's a long hadith, as we mentioned, but you can see that uh, if you go through the hadith, it is talking about uh, when Muhammad died and uh, the Sahaba are very angry, especially uh, Omar is very angry and he does not believe that Muhammad uh, is, uh, is, is, uh, has died. So uh, it says then uh, in the, on the, let's see, the second, no, the sixth line from above, it says narrated Ibn Abbas. Narrated Ibn Abbas, Abu Bakr went out while Omar Ibn Khattab was talking to the people. Abu Bakr said, he sit down, sit down, said, said, did, did he say to Omar? So he commanded Omar to sit down, but Omar refused to sit down. So the people came to Abu Bakr and left Omar. And Abu Bakr said to proceed. If anyone, Abu Bakr, watch what Abu Bakr is saying. If anyone amongst you used to worship Muhammad, then Muhammad is dead. Did you catch it? So there were actually Sahaba in the time of Muhammad. Remember, Muhammad called them the best uh, generation, right? Those, those are the Sahaba. Those are the first Muslims. If any one of you amongst you used to worship Muhammad, then see, he's a human. He just died. Did you That's catch right. That? And by the way, you know, Rob, that there is a controversy about whether this verse was actually revealed earlier to Muhammad or was somehow miraculously revealed to Abu Bakr. But anyway, that's a whole different topic. Yes. Do so you see? So actually, people used to worship Muhammad. And we see that even the Sahaba, they used to drink his blood. Remember, uh, there were, uh, Muhammad got wounded. And uh, uh, it says that, uh, according to the Muslim source, very highly trusted source, that Malik ibn Sinan drank the blood on the day of Uhud and licked it up. Wait, why would you do that? What's the wisdom behind it? <laughs> Actually, why would anyone drink blood? Because they worship Muhammad. And Muhammad didn't tell him, no, don't do it. He said, the fire will not touch you. Did you catch it? I mean, this is a sinner. This is a man like you and me. Maybe he's a prophet, but the fire will not touch you. Clearly, nothing fishy is going on. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like, you know, you know what happens, uh, you know, Rob, is like people, uh, especially the Islamic, I should say, uh, scholars, they keep taking and borrowing things that apply to Christ mm -hmm. because the fire will not touch us because of the blood of Jesus. Exactly. And all of a sudden they start applying it to a sinner. Yes. So we see here a copy paste kind of story, right? Uh, Muslims trying, you know, uh, we believe, we Christians, we believe that Christian, that uh, that our holy Lord and Savior Christ, he is our God, right? He, and, and he washes with his blood our sins away, the sins of mankind. But it's not only the blood. We also see that uh, something similar occurred when Abdullah ibn Az-Zubayr drank the blood, uh, as we mentioned, the blood. But we also see a woman drinking the urine of Muhammad. And he did not say to her, no, what have you done? He told her, you will never complain of stomach pain again. Did you catch it? Wow. So how, how, how 
How are they not worshiping Muhammad? Can any Muslim explain to us how this is not clear worship? Why would you drink the urine and the blood of Muhammad? Absolutely. And, and Muhammad, in fact, even mentioned something like this about husbands. He says, you know, a, a wife needs to lick basically uh, the pus that is coming out of his skin as a way of submission and worship to him. I mean, that's exactly the insinuation here. So you can see that this is when applied to Muhammad, it's clearly an act of praise and worship to a human being who has been elevated to be equal to God, which later we'll touch on the idea of shirk. Yes. Where else do you want to go, brother, beside uh, this hadith? Yeah, uh, you know, some, some Muslims might be, uh, you know, Quran-only Muslims, right? Or maybe they even reject Sahih al-Bukhari and uh, throw Sahih al-Bukhari under the bus. But what about the Quran, brother al-Fadi? Can any Muslim reject the Quran and get away with it and still be a Muslim? Of clearly, of course not. Of clearly course not, right? Clearly not. So you are out of Islam the moment you reject the Quran. So if we go to uh, chapter forty-eight, ayah nine, uh, maybe I can share my screen. Is that possible? Can I share the screen to put it on the screen? Let's see if that if it's going to work. Mm, okay. Uh, share. Do you see something, or is it is it already shown, brother? Uh, I'm not hearing you. I think you muted your, your mic. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sharing okay. it right now. Everybody oh, can okay. see it. Now. Yeah, yeah, so it's working. Great, great, great. So you see here, we can see that uh, it says, if we read it, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا Wait a second. If you read it like this, and uh, Brother Al-Fadi, you know even, uh, you know Arabic better than me. What what can we make out of this if you translate it uh, from the Arabic? Well, I can mean, you... uh, people can even see the translation right here. I mean, it's it's clearly using praise worthy words and it's saying things that to re uh, reverence him. It says here to give glory to him and uh, it gives you the time from when you do this and so on and so forth. Uh, to succor him, you know, basically, or or to, uh, uh, you know, give praises to him. And what's so interesting, Rob, is that the, the commentators struggled with this. Yes. And they're not really so sure of these acts of worship and praise applied to Allah alone or to both Allah and Muhammad. And some says it is possible that it applies to Muhammad, but it may not be really acceptable since, why do you think they said this? And like as a makshari, he knows this is an act of worship that should be applied to Allah alone. Yes. It's not only that, uh, Brother Al-Fadi, any Arabic speaker from the Middle East, I don't care which country you are from, but when we went to school and they uh, taught us the Arabic grammar rules, if you read it like this, it says, billahi wa rasuli. Now, who is the last person? It's Rasul, the Rasul, right? It's Muhammad. According to Arabic grammar rules, all the words that come after the last person that you see here, go back to the last person and the last person alone. So in other words, you have to assist Muhammad, assist him how? In battle, you have to honor or respect Muhammad and you have to glorify Muhammad. It's an yeah. act of worship every morning and evening. So that's and a clear worship, clear act of worship by the Muslims. They are commanded to worship Muhammad every morning and evening and and here's here's an interesting thing by the way uh, uh, if you want to do a literal English translation of the word to aziruhu meaning to strengthen him to assist him does any Muslim believe that you can strengthen your God does this really work no you strengthen no. your God so yeah. what do you think some of the commentators says they said yeah. this applies to Muhammad and the rest applies to Allah yeah pick and choose Classic. Yeah, exactly. Let, let me tell you something, brother. Uh, there was a Muslim who made a response video about of one my of one of my videos that I made about this very topic, the worship of Muhammad. He said to me, no, uh, no, no. In his response video, he said the first word, you know, it's assisting Allah by doing da uh, dawah, right? Doing dawah. What? Wait, wait. If we go to Al Qurtubi, for example, brother. Tafsir al Qurtubi, and you can see, still see the screen, right, Brother Al Fadi? Absolutely, we can see okay. it uh, very yeah. well. 
he made he made this video and I took a screenshot of his this video of his video and he says that the owner is Allah and uh, you see the belonging of Allah who is the owner all the words that you see are go back to the owner but wait a second let us uh, see what someone like Al Qurtubi had to say about the tafsir of this ayah chapter forty eight ayah nine chapter forty eight ayah nine same. Chapter right, same ayah. Let me be wa rasuli wa tu aziru wa tu waqiru wa tu sabbihu bukratan wa asila. Tafsir al Qurtubi for chapter 48, ayah 9 says, Ibn Abbas, who is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad? Who is Ibn Abbas according to Muhammad? Hebr al Ummah, the ink of That's the right. Ummah, the ink of the Ummah, the, the father of commentaries, exactly. Exactly. I mean, uh, he's the number one, basically, right, when it comes to commentary uh, on the Quran. So Ibn Abbas said, you must fight with him with the sword who with muhammad so it's not allah because allah will not actually come in, into his creation he will not enter his creation according to islam allah is above his creation so who are you need who, who are who do you need to assist in battle it's muhammad so tafsir al-qurtubi very highly respected tafsir actually explains what who who it goes back to and it, he is explaining the first word, what to aziru to assist him in battle. Who Muhammad? So the first verb actually explains to who it goes back. So it, this one goes back to Muhammad. This also goes back to Muhammad. And the last one, this is why I made it white. The last one, which is an act of worship, what to sabbihu tasbih root word goes back also to Muhammad. So the first verb already explains it away to who it goes and we explain Absolutely. the grammar rules of arabic language tells us the last mentioned person everything that comes after go back to the last person so muslims why do you worship muhammad i demand an answer for my question well i would say don't don't hold your breath because you're not going <laughs> to get the answer anyway brother and i worry about you that you keep holding your breath and uh, you don't get an answer mm -hmm. um so uh, Ibn, uh, actually, for people, if you're interested to go and see, for instance, in English what Ibn Abbas says, you can go to a website called attafsir.com and just put the uh, chapter 48, the verse 9, and choose Tanwir al miqbas li Ibn Abbas, which is the commentary of Ibn Abbas. And Ibn Abbas clearly distinguished what applies to Muhammad, like you fight with him, with the sword. And then when it came to Allah, you praise him or you worship him. So he was making a distinction between what applies to Muhammad and what applies to Allah because he knew there is trouble in the horizon here when it comes to how you would view those types of honorifics as they're mentioned in the Quran. I love what Sam Shamon says that, that this verse was written in a in a very convoluted way just to hide the fact that you can worship Muhammad and you can make up all that kind of stories about that. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, even the shaykh, when you ask them, they uh, come with tons of tafsir, tons of explanations. I mean, uh, do you really need to be a scholar to understand what is going on? I mean, should we not go to the people who actually understood the Quran like Ibn Abbas, right? Ibn Abbas is crystal clear about it. What the word what to aziruhu means. It means to assist him who? To fight with him, to assist Muhammad in battle with the sword. Does Allah need assistance with the sword, Muslims? Clearly not, right? And Allah does not enter the creation to be assisted with the sword. Exactly. I mean, that's what I mean is if you look at it from a pure Islamic theology, there is all kind of problems written all over this verse. And you cannot tell me this is a model for grammatical, uh, basically, composition because it is so weak if that's the way you want to interpret it, basically, that you pick parts and apply it to one, uh, basically, uh, person and or subject and you pick another part and apply it to the other subject. How would person know? How would anyone who doesn't know anything about this when they come across it the first time would know that it's applying to Allah, not to Muhammad or to both at least together combined? Yes, exactly. But no, it, it, it's not about uh, Allah. In no way, shape or form it's about Allah because as we sh uh, said, the first word already explains it. You cannot say, oh, this go this one goes back to Muhammad. Wait, the second one goes back to Allah and the third one goes also back to Allah. We, you know, those games, you cannot play those games with Arabic speaking people like you and me, Al-Fadi, uh, brother Al-Fadi. We went to school, 
we can go and see what the uh, tafsir that is like al qurtubi has to say about it so those taqiyya games are over right it's it's over absolutely you know courtesy of social media and youtube which by the way is in the right pocket of muslims but uh, that doesn't prevent us from sharing the truth using youtube the same venue that they put in their pocket actually exactly exactly so uh maybe we can go also to chapter 33 ayah 56 brother al fadi uh, uh maybe sure. i can share i can share it again if, if on you want to share that'll be great brother go ahead let's see uh all right does it already show can we see it already okay yes this is uh the surat al ahzab chapter 33 ayah 56 muslims when we ask them this question about uh let me you know what let me read the arabic first in allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima uh now brother al-fadi uh what do you think about this ayah does it here say blessings as the many translations are giving us or does it of say of course not of course i mean here is what's so interesting brother and i mentioned this many times and i know you mentioned it and we're going to address it one more time when you conclude your daily prayer the ritual prayer you mm -hmm. say uh you know distinguish between salli ala nabi you saluna ala nabi aw nusalli ala nabi and barik allahumma right you know mm -hmm. allahumma salli ala muhammad notice and then the next one allahumma barik so exactly. there is a difference between the word for blessing that's baraka or barik in this case and prayer which is you salli so in that prayer that you use at the conclusion of your daily prayer as a muslim the word is given to you one for prayer and one for praise uh, uh one for blessing so I'm, I'm not so sure really why can't they look at it that way exactly exactly uh so it has nothing to do with blessing because if allah was the so-called perfect communicator and he claims to be god and we know that god should be perfect he should have said in allah you barikuna. Did you catch it? You barikuna. Exactly. Which and, exactly. and the root word is baraka. To Allah's tongue, you know? I don't know yeah. what happens to Allah's tongue. His tongue got cut off, you know, when he was saying that word. Yeah. Actually, when Muslims have to fix the, the mistake of Allah, they actually are proving to us that Allah is not perfect. Clearly, he's not the perfect communicator. Else, he would have said, you barikuna, uh, to avoid all this necessary... Uh, confusion mass confusion and Allah if he was actually the true God he should have known that maybe Arabic speakers uh, like uh, brother Al Fadi and Rob Christian or Christian Prince they they will know hey uh, we can use this against Islam in the court of law what do you think brother Al Fadi well I think uh, that's a great idea <laughs> so uh, again when Allah is praying when Allah is praying, to who does Allah pray? I mean, if, uh, you know, uh, Brother Al-Fadi, you know what? Let us go with the word blessing for a split second. Let us be politically correct. We understand that Allah uh, can bless, right? Because the blessing should come from him. But it says, indeed, Allah and his angels send blessing. But wait, Brother Al-Fadi, since when do angels pray, uh, bless someone? When well, did that happen? Yeah, I know. I mean, uh, right now in the Quran, he's the only object of that. Exactly. So here, either way, even if you're going to use the word blessing, which is it does not mean blessing, right? But here we have two Arabic speakers who can actually refute the fact that it means blessing. But if we go with the Muslims, still there is a huge problem because the blessing should come only and only from Allah. If we continue reading, it says even it makes it even more worse. Send blessings and abundant salvation upon him. So. Allah is commanding the Muslims to even uh, to, to the Muslims to also bless Muhammad. But wait, since when can sinners like the Muslims? I mean, ask any Muslim, are you a sinner? Of course, they will say yes. So, how can sinners bless Muhammad? Shouldn't the blessing come from Allah, Brother Al Fadi? Not the that angels and that not the true. Muslims. So, that either way, either way, you have a major dilemma, you have a major disaster in this. Ah, yeah. No, it does not mean blessing. But if you say it means blessing, then still you have a major issue because angels, last time I checked, angels and Muslims cannot bless anyone. They cannot bless because the blessing should come only for Allah. So 
in the end it only means and only means Allah and his angels are praying it's nothing but praying correct and and what I want to say uh, uh Rob is is is, is this uh, here there is a boatload of theological problems you're saying that angels are a source of blessing you're saying humans are source of blessing so isn't that shirk you're elevating creatures to have the same divine prerogatives and making them equal to god technically speaking exactly exactly and, and like i said before i mean even uh, muhammad hijab during that um, <laughs> hot debate i mean uh, millions of people watched the debate muhammad hijab repeated after brother david wood dr david wood he said you know Allah prays for not to and he said oh, he made a mistake he said I knew I, I I I was going to give you free Arabic lessons so he claimed to be an Arabic expert instead of fixing the problem he said Allah prays for not to and I mean if you claim to be an Arabic expert and you're going to teach David Wood our dear brother David Wood le Arabic lessons at least be consistent it does not may it does not mean pray for not to it means Allah on the prophet so this so-called Arabic expert, he even failed in his Arabic skills. I mean, how can you teach a non-Arabic speaker like David Wood Arabic lessons if you yourself is are failing in the Arabic language? Right, Brother Fadi? You can confirm this, right? True. That is absolutely true. And, you know, uh, obviously, like I said, I mean, it's unfortunate that Muhammad Hijab and his followers uh, ignored this and picked on other things in a debate and made it sound like as if their guy won the debate when in fact you know anyone can go and watch that debate but all that to say ignoring something so significant like this in the spirit of the debate itself brother i want to go back again to someone making a comment his name is john betty john i don't know your background by the way so i don't want to make any assumptions maybe you are a christian maybe you are seeking maybe you're a muslim uh john is saying well humans can bless others and there is truth to that as a matter of fact God himself told Abraham and you will be a blessing to all the families of the earth but how would that happen biblically speaking only in Christ we can bless others we do not hold any ability to bless others unless we are blessed empowered by God and sharing truth with them exactly. there is a big difference here John but what we were saying according to Islam versus what the biblical thinking is all about so we need to make a distinction here what Islam is teaching is idolatry and shirk that's yes. what it, it's exactly is it's saying here and we're talking about blessings and praises that are equivalent to divine source exactly not, yeah not me and you blessing others because of the blessings we've received that's all different story and I assure you even when we do it we do it in the name of God in the name of Christ basically exactly and brother al fadi uh, uh remember uh we, we mentioned muhammad hijab muhammad hijab when he came back from africa from ghana he said no no i meant to say allah praises as you see on the screen allah praises the prophet so again he's proving to us that allah is committing shirk by praising the prophet because hamd is only an attribute uh given to allah for, or only for allah so how is allah doing hamd to to Muhammad while we see in chapter 1 ayah 2 in the Quran alhamdulillah faqat right because the hamd alhamd is only and only for Allah it should not be to anyone because that's again shirk that's blasphemy either way Mr. Muhammad Hijab you made a fool out of yourself and the people who were clapping for you they are nothing but fools you know uh, the sheep blind sheep leading the blind sheep yeah, it's unfortunate, of course, and, and this is really a standard operating procedure, as you know, uh, Rob, and those uh, who follow Islamic debate, Islamic channels, and so on and so forth, they can see that there is this uh, uh, emotional following, you know, so whatever my leader that I'm fascinated with says, I'm going to praise that saying, and don't even go and double check it. This is why, uh, you know, you find a lot of blind leading blinds, unfortunately, in that field. But I am so thankful now that there is so many tools available for Muslim seekers who can go and double check what this person says and what that person says. And we tell you what, 
check what I am saying, double check what Rob is saying. We're not intimidated by it. Go and double check it yourself. We're giving you sources. We showed you references. So we're not trying to hide anything from you. By all means, God has given you uh, the mental capacity, the intel intellectual ability to be able to do so. And we encourage you to go and double check these things because the days of oppression, mental oppression, uh, intellectual oppression are over. You have so many platforms and sources that will enable you to double check these sources. You have access now to Islamic sources that were hidden from you, by the way. So we encourage you to do so. Exactly. Uh, and Brother Al Fadi, uh, maybe uh, I just shared uh, another uh, page on, on the screen. You can see it. Uh, this hadith is unfortunately, I did not find it in the, as an English translation. Uh, you know Arabic, I know Arabic. Maybe you can read uh, the highlighted part here, uh, Brother Al Fadi, for us, and we can translate and see what is happening in this hadith. And this, by the way, is sound hadith. Go ahead, Brother. So you want me to read in Arabic? Yes, if you can, and we will translate. Okay. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to read from the beginning. Say, دَخَلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَائِطًا لِلْأَنصَارِ وَمَعَهُ أَبُو بَكْرِ وَعُمَرْ وَرَجْلٌ مِنَ الْأَنصَارِ وَفِي الْحَائِطْ غَنَمْ فَسَجَدَتْ لَهُ Wait a second, brother. Bakr, ya yeah. Brother Al-Fadi, can you translate this highlighted part? What does this mean here? سَجَدَتْ لَهُ meaning bowed down in worship. Yes, it's an, it's an act of worship. It's prostration. Sujood is an act of worship. So here we see that the sheep, right? The sheep started to prostrate to who? To Muhammad. And let us see what Abu Bakr has to say about it. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, so, so Abu Bakr's reaction was, I'm going to give the context here, that he was overwhelmed by the fact that the sheep, bowed down in worship but prostrated to muhammad and he says in i'm gonna read in arabic and give you in english فَقَالَ أَبُو بَكْرِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ كُنَّا نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِالسُّجُودِ لَكَ مِنْ هَذِي الْغَنَمْ we should have done this rather than the sheep so what did abu bakr wanted to do to prostrate to muhammad just like ah, the sheep did do you see? i mean remember bro bro oh. Rob, this is the, this is the holy goat that ate the Quran, you know, so yeah, that's why he was doing this. Probably, yeah. yeah. So you see Abu Bakr himself, which is the number one guy immediately after Muhammad, the first caliph, can you imagine? He said, uh, you know, we should have prostrated, we should have did sujood to you instead of these sheep. So Abu Bakr wanted to worship Muhammad. Did you catch it, people? Wow! So the Sahaba, now we can understand why the Sahaba used to drink the urine of Muhammad, why they put the saliva on the face on their faces of Muhammad and why they drink his blood. They actually wanted to worship him. And a lot of Sahaba worshipped Muhammad. Remember what the hadith that we mentioned earlier from Sahih al-Bukhari. Actually, Sahaba used to worship Muhammad. And now because he died, Abu Bakr said, ha, see, he died. So he's nothing but a mere, mere human. And we see that the Sahaba wanted to worship Muhammad over and over and over again. And this is the best generation of Islam, right, uh, Al-Fadi? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. And you know, brother, let me ask you this. Have you noticed that, and, and I see a comment that uh, is confirming this. Have you got a pushback from Muslims when you, for instance, uh, talk about Allah in, in your shows or try to expose a characteristic about Allah versus when you say anything about Muhammad, do they jump to the rescue of Allah or Muhammad most of the time, if not uh, even all of the time? Uh, of, of course, Muhammad, man. Muhammad is everything in Islam. Are you with Without, me, yeah, um, did, did you? Mm, yeah, I, I, can you hear me? My mic, mic is not muted. Can you hear me? No, no, we can hear you. I mean, I, okay. I don't know if you have a, a, yeah, a Wi-Fi yeah. issue, but uh, I was saying, you okay, know, the Muslims you... always jump to the rescue of Muhammad versus ignoring Allah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, uh, Muhammad, do you hear me? Do you hear me, my friend? Do you still hear me? Am I might be heard. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, in Islam, if you, the moment you criticize Muhammad, they they are allowed to kill you. You can insult Allah. And you might be forgiven, but the moment you say something bad about Muhammad, you criticize him, they are allowed to kill you. Even if you repent, they will still not forgive you. They will still kill you. There is no forgiveness for insulting or criticizing Muhammad. So you see that Muhammad is, um, is on a much higher 
level than Allah himself in Islam. Yeah, I mean, the very name Muhammad is telling, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the praised one. Wow. I mean, it's, the it's one. amazing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I want to ask any Muslim here or a Muslim who will watch it later, please, my friends, answer this question. Can you become a Muslim by reciting half of the Islamic Shahada and saying, Ashhadu anna la ilaha illallah. I basically testify that there is no God but Allah and stop without saying, and Muhammad is his messenger. So Muhammad is your savior, your yeah. conduit for salvation. You are labeled Muslim because of him and the list can go on and on and on. So don't tell me that's not shirk because you're elevating a human being to be equal to Allah. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and you said uh, before that a very important uh, 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 thing, uh, Brother Al Fadi, you said that the name of Muhammad means the praised one. But when we go back to Quran, chapter 1, ayah 2, we see that all praise is to Allah. So when Muhammad, we know that was not his name, it was a title that he took. He called himself later Muhammad. So when he took that name, he made himself equal to Allah and he started to use the attributes of Allah. Because again, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. As you see on the screen, the hamd, the praise is only to Allah. So Muhammad, when he became the praised one, he became equal to Allah in Islam. Wow. That's a huge Absolutely. Deal. Absolutely. Brother Rory, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, your uh, super chat. We appreciate you. Uh, you're asking if you can use clips or parts of this video. I mean, I have no problem. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, Rob, do you have any problem? Anyone no. using uh, absolutely? I mean, we would love to be a blessing to you guys. Amen. You know, uh, my videos on all my right. YouTube channel are are all yours, guys. Please do so. I I actually love you to do that. You know, share our videos, download parts of our videos, put uh, subtitles in your own language, and re-upload them because the truth must be spread out. Spread it like wildfire. And you know, we're not doing this for ourselves, uh, brother Al Fadi. I mean. Uh, the people are watching and our holy living God is our witness. We are not doing this for ourselves. We are doing this for the poor victims of Islam. They are the ones who need help. They need the truth to be told to them. And we know that more than 70% of the Muslims are non-Arabic speaking Muslims. So they don't know what the Arabic says. And this is why we need to talk about the topics that Muslim shiuch, Muslim imams do not dare to talk about. So, yeah. Amen. And yeah. you're absolutely correct because you're not going to find a single... I mean, look what happened with Yasser Qadi. I mean, I, I really sympathize with the guy. He yeah. said something truthful. He says there are holes, basically, with the history of the uh, early uh, Quranic uh, composition and collection. Mm -hmm. And then look at the uh, amount of attacks that he received, forcing him now to recant what he says, forcing him to get aggravated with anyone who is using that clip, uh, basically attacking others for sharing the truth, reporting people like David Wood for <laughs> using his clip. It's kind of yeah. funny, hilarious, actually. Amazing. But it yeah. shows what happens when you, say, you, when you dare to say anything against Islam. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, uh, I yeah. once uh, watched a video from a sheikh uh, who was talking live on air, and he was actually addressing the shiuch, the, the imams, uh, the, the scholars of Islam, and he said, you should know, and he was telling to the viewers, and I think the guy, uh, they, they removed him, uh, they took him out of office. He was a sheikh himself, he was a PhD sheikh, he, said, he was honest, he said, more than 90% of the Muslim sources, the imams do not dare to talk about these topics. More than 90% of all Muslim topics, they don't dare to mention them because if they start to talk about these topics, no, man, no many Muslims would stay Muslims in 2020. And that's a fact. Correct. That's a fact. Correct. Absolutely. I mean, I wonder if the day would come when uh, Islamic authorities will say, you know, Muslims, you are free to follow whatever religion you want and let's see how many are going to flock out of islam exactly brother uh, so, so what else do you want to talk about right now brother uh in yeah, relationship brother, to the topic of Muslim. yeah i i want to ask the muslims uh you know if you if you are watching our video 
Don't allow, don't allow any imam, any sheikh to deceive you. It's 2020. And remember what Bilal Phillips, the Bilal Phillips, the imam from Canada, he said, he knows because today's youth, they know when they study the sources that we are mentioning in our videos, on our live shows, they know when they actually do some digging, they do some research, they know that the standard narrative has holes in it, as Yasser Qadi said. So well, the moment they start to do their homework, they will leave Islam. And Bilal Phillips said it. It will hit us like a tsunami, like an avalanche. And he was honest. He knew that a, a wave, a huge tsunami of apostates is going to hurt the Muslim community all over the world. So Muslims, it's still not late. Do your homework. Go and recheck if Brother Al Fadi or me, myself, Rob Christian, if we did lie to you in any way, shape, or form, and you will see if you do your homework well, you will leave Islam. So it's not late for you. Please leave Muhammad. Don't let anyone fool you and come back home to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And brother, do you want to show that image of prostration and what to say at yes. the end of the prayer? Or I can show it myself if you want. But uh, uh, it's it's really powerful, and I want people to see that. Yeah, this is this is really. I'll be more than happy to show it if you want. Yeah, can you do that, please? Yes, I, I'm gonna go ahead and and do this. And, and this um, is one of the damaging parts, and every Muslim must say this in his prayer, and he re needs to repeat it over and over, right? So let's right. see if uh, if I can see the screen. Okay, yeah, this one. Maybe you can read the Arabic, uh, Brother Al Fadi. So uh, the Arabic says, "Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh." So wow. um, the English is clear. Here is the problem with this, uh, brother. You yeah. say this as a Muslim, by the way, at the conclusion of every prayer, at least. If you pray the five daily prayers, because you can pray more than that, there are sunnah prayers. But at the conclusion of these five prayers, you say this at least every time you conclude that prayer. But doesn't this look like you're talking to Muhammad as if he's still alive? The guy is dead for 14 centuries, folks. You're talking to him as if he is alive and you are giving him peace. You are asking for mercy and you're blessing him. Why? I thought he's already got it made. Isn't he in heaven already? I mean, why does he need any of this? Yeah, and notice people who are watching, people who are listening. Here, as you see in front of you, this is an example of how a Muslim is praying. And he needs to talk to Muhammad directly while he's praying. Did you catch it? So he's addressing Muhammad. Peace be upon you, O Nabi, O Prophet. Peace be upon you. So the Muslims are talking to the dead Muhammad who has been buried and he is dead and buried in Medina somewhere for 1400 years. So Muslims, shouldn't you not only talk to Allah, your creator, while you are praying? Why are you praying to Muhammad? Why are you talking in your prayer exactly. to Muhammad? So we see, we can conclude yeah. that Muhammad is not a mere man. He is equal to Allah because he is accepting prayer. Because you as a Muslim are praying directly to Muhammad. You are talking to Muhammad. Right? Peace yeah. be upon you. Yeah, and, and Fred, Fred. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one of our uh, great moderators here, Fred Samford. Uh, Fred, you're asking a great question. You're saying, isn't this an act of... Uh, uh, necromancy basically which is speaking to the dead I mean as an example of that will be um, uh, King Saul when he requested to talk to the spirit of Samuel you know uh, well you would make a case and an argument that Muhammad violated the rules of the Old Testament when he did something like this because Muhammad himself by the way who taught the Muslims to say this. Let me read something to you. Uh, I'm, I'm reading this from an amazing article that uh, Sam Shamoun uh, did, and I want to give credit to the brother because he write a lot of amazing work, and it makes it easier for us to go and find those right away. So, for instance, making dua or invocation and praying to Muhammad. Muhammad instructed his followers to pray to him directly during their daily acts of worship, narrated uh, Shaqiq, Ibn Sal uh, Salama, Abdullah says, whenever you prayed behind the Prophet, we used to recite, peace be on Gabriel, Michael, peace be on so and so, 
once Allah's apostles looked back at us and said, Allah himself is a salam, meaning peace. And if anyone of you prays, then they should say, At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa uh, uh, basically what tabi'atu in meaning uh, assalamu alayka ayyuha nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu assalamu alayna I'm going to read it in English now he's saying basically say peace be on you O prophet and Allah's mercy and blessings be on you in other words brother Muhammad didn't like the fact that they are invoking these uh, blessings to Gabriel and Michael and others he wanted it to himself at the conclusion of the prayer. Yeah, you see, uh, Muhammad, when the moment, like we said, the moment he took on the name, the praised one, he already showed his colors, and you, uh, and by the fruits, the, you will know them, right? By their fruits, you will know them. So here again, we see crystal clear evidence that Muhammad made himself equal to Allah. It was not enough for the Muslims and the Sahaba. And still after 49 years, it's not enough to only pray to Allah. You have to also talk to Muhammad directly when you, while you're praying. So here, Muhammad again, placing himself equal on the same level with Allah. As-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. Right? Peace be upon you. So they are talking to him directly. Wow. If this is not shirk, then I don't know the meaning of blasphemy and shirk, brother Al-Fadi. That's correct. And I just want to repeat it one more time. The phrase really uh, has three parts to it. At-tahiyyatu lillahi. Meaning, uh, uh, basically, uh, the, the, the act of worship. And exactly to God. Yeah. salawatu the prayers. tayyibatu the blessings, basically. Uh, so all of those are being invoked during the prayers. And then the object that receives all of these would be Muhammad. Yes, yes. As someone in the someone in the in the chat is saying, talking to the dead. It's not only talking to the dead, brother. You are talking actually to someone who who placed himself equal to Allah. Because you know, according to Islam, we always heard from the Muslims, Allah is the only creator. But we see that they have to. They are commanded to talk to Muhammad. It's not enough to talk to Allah only, and that's a huge disaster. If that's not shirk, if that's not blasphemy, then I don't know the meaning of blasphemy or shirk. But I'll fight. I'm glad actually that you're talking about blasphemy because indeed that's exactly what's going on. In fact, uh, let me show an image that will uh be an eye opening here because our muslim friends always claim that we are the ones who are blaspheming against god brother and yet who is the one who's blaspheming <laughs> according to the quran yeah who's committing shirk yeah, who yeah. is associating a human to god and the list can go on and on and on yeah Clear, clear blasphemy, and we mentioned chapter 48 ayah 9. there are many ayahs that we can go to we see also ayahs like you have to obey Muhammad first and then obey Allah. It's not enough to obey Allah. You have to also obey Muhammad. Because remember chapter 53, right. ayah 30, uh, sorry, chapter 53, ayah 3 and 4, everything that Muhammad says is nothing but divine revelation. In huwa illa wahyin yuha. Remember, everything that comes out of the mouth of Muhammad is nothing but divine revelation. Chapter 53, ayah 3 and 4. So, this is nothing but blasphemy and Muhammad crystal clear over and over. We, we went to the most authentic sources. We showed everybody how Muslims pray is nothing but blasphemy. Muhammad wanted to elevate himself and make himself equal to our biblical Jesus. He wanted to be like the biblical Jesus. This is why he made himself equal with Allah. I mean, <laughs> we know that he's dead. He's dead for 14 years, buried somewhere in Medina. Muslims. Why are you praying to Muhammad? Why? That's a good question. Why uh, exactly? Why do you? I mean, we pray. Jesus says, if you ask anything in my name, right? Where is Jesus? According to Islam, he's alive. He's near Allah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're praying to someone who is dead. You don't believe me? Just go to Medina and take a look at his shrine. He's buried in the ground. Why do you pray to him? Please ask me, uh, answer that question. 
by the Islamic own admission, he's just a human being. My Jesus is God incarnate. If you've seen him, you've seen the Father. He is the Word of God who became flesh. So I'm praying to God. I'm not praying to a human being. Why do you have a problem with this? Yeah, exactly, exactly, brother Al Fadi. You know, uh, uh, good that we are mentioning the uh, the worship of Muhammad. Actually, when Muhammad he went to the uh, Christians, he wanted to reconcile with the Christians, right? And we know the story about the Christians of Najran when they came to debate him. So he tried out his luck with the Christians. If we, if I can show the screen again, brother Al Fadi, let's see if I can show share the screen once more. We can only not only see that Muhammad, you know, after. Uh, trying out his luck with the Christians when they rejected him He wanted to make sure that he made himself equal with Allah But before that when he went to the Christians, I hope the, sh the screen is showing now. Can you share it brother from your side? Uh, if we go to chapter 9 ayah yeah. 31. Yeah, uh, this is a very famous ayah that we Christians always use against Muhammad and the Muslims in the court of law why because we Arabic speaking Christians from the Middle East, we don't go to the translation, which is nothing but uh, taqiyya. It's, it is nothing but deception. It says, Wait a second, uh, Brother Al Fadi. What does this mean? It says they have taken their monks and scholars as lords, as right. gods. Do you see it? As gods. So they have taken God, their monks exactly. and scholars as gods, men. Duni instead of Allah and the Messiah. So here Muhammad trying out his luck with the Christians, saying, "Look, look. Yes, we understand, why, right? We understand that you you worship uh, exactly. That's the why it's God. called the conjunction. Wow. Exactly. So he was trying. He was trying to reconcile with the Christians. This is why he came up with this ayah, right? He came up with this ayah to show the Christians. Ah, okay. Uh, you know, uh, Jesus is actually equal to Allah, right? You worship Jesus, yes, he's equal, he's divine, like Allah. So, and it's, it's talking about lords, right? Min dun instead of Allah and Al Masih. Al Masih is Jesus Christ, right, Muslims? Now, <laughs> Muslims, yeah, you need to fix this. By Why don't you take it to verse uh, 29, brother? Take it to verse 29. If you go to verse 29, what was the argument against the Christians and the Jews? Fight those of the people of the book why because they did not accept the faith in allah in allah alone right so yeah. muslims why are you violating the same thing here your exactly. faith is in two people allah and a human being called muhammad why exactly. are you violating it yeah and and uh, and you know muslims always cry for context brother al fadi you know the context behind chapter 9 i had 28 and 29 since when yeah. We talked in the context, right? We talked yeah. in this world context. Yeah, they, you know, uh, when they always cry for content. Rob Christian, please, when you talk about chapter 9, 29, at least tell us the context. Okay, no problem. The context behind chapter 9, 28, 29 is that Muhammad started to call the pagans, also the Jews and the Christians, filthy, nejison, right? They are nejis. They are nejis. They are filthy. So from, the, from now on, they are not allowed to enter Mecca. Not come near Masjid al Haram, right? And the Muslims started to complain. You know, even if you go to Ibn Kathir, Tafsir, you'll see that the Muslims started to complain to Muhammad. They are saying, We will get poor, we will get bankrupt. Now you stop the trading of, uh, you know, the pagans and the Romans. Remember, the Romans were the Christians. You, you, you are not allowing them to enter Mecca anymore. That means the trade stops. That's right. It's all about that money. Means they will go it's poor. All about money. What does Muhammad say? Don't worry, be happy. I have a solution. What's that solution, brother Al Fadi? Yeah, come up with the jizya. Come up with the jizya that we will force on the Jews and the Christians, um, right? The people of the yeah. of the book. Yeah. Right. And uh, you know, here at least this this uh translation, yeah. you see, it's saying humiliation, right? Some translations like Sahih International, they will use humble. <laughs> I will give you a thousand dollar Muslims if the highlighted words in the Arabic mean humble. It no, it it means to be little, to be humiliated and disgraced. Go to Tafsir bin Kathir if you don't believe me. Tafsir bin Kathir says that the Jews and the Christians must feel disgraced, uh, humiliated at all times. Drive them to the narrowest of the road. Drive them to the sewage. Right. So you see, 
now we just mentioned the context behind chapter 9, ayah 28 and 29. That's the real context, right? So the Muslims, their only job is to fight, 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 fight. You don't have to work anymore. Your only job is fight, conquer as many countries as you can, and you will get the money from the booty and from the jizya that you can force on the Jews and the Christians. Right? You know what, what even and what is even more funny about yeah. earning money. Exactly. You know what is more funny, brother Al Fadi? If we go to the next ayah, to ayah 30, it says, and the Jews said, Uzair is the son of Allah, and the Christians said, the, the Messiah is the son of Allah. They utter this from their own mouth. They speak like the former disbelievers. May Allah kill them. May Allah destroy them. So Allah is cursing the Jews and the Christians. But the next ayah, as we mentioned, here we see that, uh, you know, the, the, the real gods, the Arbaban, are Allah and the Messiah. Look at the irony. The moment Muhammad started to fabricate his eyes, he busted himself. What a shame. This is crystal clear proof exactly. that the writer exactly. of the Quran is not Allah, is nothing but Muhammad and Muhammad only. This is why I tell people you can just go to the Quran alone and refute everything right there, you know, positively and negatively, simply because uh, the Quran is a book of copy and paste that the author of the Quran did not take a moment to think about what they're saying. And as you mentioned, our Muslim friends jump to the rescue of what their God is saying. In other words, they're claiming that he is not an all-knowing God. So the next time a Muslim tells you Allah knows best, well, trust me, Allah doesn't know best because we have showed you examples of how he fumbled the yeah. knowledge that he has. Exactly. And Brother Fari, I want to add something to this ayah, on top of this ayah, so that the Christians can learn how to actually do not defend add their case. or delete, my friend. Yeah. You know, do not add or delete. At least we get accused of corrupting their book. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, uh, the thing is, Christians, when you bring this ayah, chapter 9, ayah 31, with, with uh, Muslims while you're debating them, make sure to know a very important thing. They will tell you, you know, you have to look at the vowels. The vowels is talking about, you know, harf uh, majrur. You know what I mean, uh, Brother Al-Fadi. They will bring up, you know, uh, you have the vowels. They they actually show that it's only Allah that you can, you have to take as God. But wait, if we go, and, and Brother, I know you are doing amazing research about the Sana'a manuscript. Did the old manuscript contain vowels? Did they contain doubts? No. What does that no, mean, Brother Al-Fadi? I mean what does that mean? It means it's open for interpretation. <laughs> uh, thank you. So the vowels, the excuse, you know, the vowels that you see th here on top, the things here that are basically diagonal or, uh, uh, you know, the dots, you see the dots that can change even the meaning of a word. If you place the dot on top or on beneath, two dots uh, on top, two dots uh, 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 underneath, it can change the whole meaning of the word. So here, you cannot play those games with us because the Uthmanic Quran, the so-called Uthmanic Quran that Muslims don't have anymore, the Uthmanic Quran in the 7th century did not have vowels, did not have dots. So those word games, playing of word games, you cannot play those with the Arabic-speaking Christians because we know how easy it is to defeat and, and, and actually refute your argument. And, you know, I, I really want to recommend... Uh... I want to recommend Dr. Brubaker's amazing uh, YouTube channel called Variant Quran. Everybody should go and uh, uh, subscribe to it. I'm going to see him uh, this week, and uh, I'm going to tell him that I'm so jealous. Within uh, two weeks, he has like uh, 8,000 subscribers, bro. It took me a year and a half to get 10,000. So uh, <laughs> he's doing well. Uh, pray yeah. the Lord. We, we want uh, to bless his channel. We want people to go and learn. And you will see in there manuscripts that he will be talking about and you'll know what we mean by there is no diacritical markings basically the words have no dottings or anything like that amazing amazing research i hope that he will lord willing he will bring more videos into the mix and to make sure that you know the muslims always claimed the quran not one dot has been changed not one letter which is nothing but a lie and remember yes Qari said there's a, there are holes in the standard narrative and now we can see the evidence now we can show everybody that the Christians, you know, the Arabic speaking Christians who could use these arguments many years ago, right? Because remember, before the internet, there, there were not many sources, not many translations. Now, now we can see that the Islamic narrative truly, truly has holes in it. So uh, God bless uh, Amen. Daniel, Amen. Daniel Brubaker. God bless all the warriors. 
uh, you know, and, and God bless the audience and the admins. Uh, keep all the admins, especially the admins in your prayers, guys. Keep us in your prayers because, you know, you should not underestimate the power of prayers. Exactly. Amen, brother. Absolutely. And we're praying for you, for your ministry, for your family, brother. And Thank pray you, for brother. us, of course. And uh, I want to invite you to come back again, uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. And we'll continue to work on more and more. Uh, I love your focus on the grammatical errors and issues like that. So maybe we'll look into uh, something uh, to that extent. Uh, I'm going to talk to Dr. Brubaker and ask him to allow us to use clips from his videos. And maybe he, at some point, when he's ready for it, uh, we'll ask him to join us as well in due time. Yeah. Uh, with that says, thank you to everyone who joined us. Thank you to the moderators. Thank you for those who gave through Super Chat and uh, uh, Super Stickers. Uh, we, we really appreciate you. Uh, we are honored by your sacrifices. And uh, please... Mm -hmm use not just this video but any of our videos uh, take clips from it you have our permission we assure you we're not going to go complaining to youtube but exactly. if you truly used it in the right manner of course uh so you don't have to worry about us complaining like some uh, did recently against david wood simply because they were yeah. showing a clip of the truth of what was said you know david didn't fabricate anything he just showed a small clip of what was being said in an actual interview that took place and was aired on YouTube, if I may add. So exactly, with that brother, says, Fadi, brother, if I if I can add to yeah. to that, uh, brother, uh, you know, please, you see please, you see the ahead. difference. Yeah, you see the difference between the Muslim apologists and you see the difference between the Christian apologists. We actually tell even the Muslims, Muslims, use our videos. I challenge you to refute our videos. Do it right and what about the christian christians please Absolutely. my videos the videos of brother al fadi and all the ways they are yours right they are yours we don't do this for ourselves we do yeah. we do this to the community and we only do this for the truth nothing but the truth nothing but the truth so you see the muslim apologists when they know they are cornered they know they start to feel the heat they will flag our videos why do yeah. christian apologists don't do that hmm Something I remember, fishy. you know, uh, a Muslim from the UK uh, opened a YouTube channel, used exactly the name of my channel, used my logo, my <laughs> actual that, yeah. logo, and YouTube, <laughs> you, yeah. YouTube refused, brother, refused wow. to take his channel down, even though we, we followed wow. the letter of the law according to their own community standards. I had to hire an attorney, and the attorney was surprised when I told them, wow. I just want them to change the name of the channel and, and a channel. And he says, what about your videos? I said, no, no, no. We love the fact that they're using our videos. He, he exactly. was puzzled by that. He just didn't know what I mean by that, you know? We want them to use, to start to use their brains. I mean, the moment, I, believe it or not, Brother Fadi, I always, uh, you know, think about it. the moment Muslims start to use their brains, they will start to know that Islam is nothing but a fabrication, is nothing but an invention for Muhammad and his sexual desires and his power lost, right? Because remember, when Muhammad was in Mecca, he was a totally different man. He tried to reconcile with the pagans. The moment he went to Medina and he started to guard himself an army of thugs, things started to change. He became 180 degrees a totally different man. You know, we see, and by the fruits, he will know them. And we know what the fruits of Muhammad are. Exactly. Amen. Amen. I'm checking to see if uh, Sam Shamon uh, sent any message about his uh, live stream. Sometimes he does live streams right after mine, but I don't see any. So uh, with that says, brother, any final words uh, before we close? Yeah. I want to thank the audience who are always supporting all the warriors in Christ. Please keep doing that, guys. Uh, we, we need you to spread our videos, download our videos, make sure to put subtitles, especially in countries like Indonesia, Malaysia and whatnot. You, you have to cut parts of our maybe maybe the videos are long but cut parts out that you like put subtitles on it so that the muslims who are nothing but victims that our truth the truth that we are sharing on the screen and we only go to to the most authentic uh, sources you saw that right we put the sources on the screen and we share the the muslims what the muslim sources are saying so guys help us to help you share our videos our videos are yours and god bless you may the peace of christ be with all of you, with your loved ones. And thank you, Brother Al Fadi, for having me here. And Lord willing, maybe we can also uh, uh, do live shows about future topics and go much, even much deeper than this, right? I remember, because last time we mentioned uh, uh, the grammatical and spelling mistakes, the disaster that we can find in the Quran. But maybe this time we can also go and see how Muslim hands, Muslim Sahaba, they 
played with the Quran and they forced Medina period ayahs inside Meccan ayahs, Meccan chapters. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. And uh, please remind people one more time, brother, how can they follow you? Just give them the exact name of your channel. How can they support you? Because we want to be a blessing to you, brother. Yeah, just uh, just uh, use the search engine, uh, uh, search for Rob Christian. Maybe our brother can also put my link uh, or, or maybe the admins, they can put the link in the live chat and uh, brother Al-Fadi, you can put it in the description field and people can access it. I believe they did already. Yeah. So, they did already for thank, sure. thank you yeah. for having me. God bless your ministry, brother Al-Fadi. And Lord willing, I want to ask God to yeah. give us health and, and, and guide us so we can continue to do what we do. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And everyone uh, you've heard, uh, it's Rob Christian. Go and search for it. He has his own YouTube channel. Please uh, subscribe to it. Make sure if there is a way to give to his ministry, take advantage of that, folks. Uh, we all live by faith. And someone also mentioned, by the way, that Sam Shimon was on earlier. Uh, so uh, don't worry about what I said about him coming uh, live right after me. But I think DCCI, Sister Atun, is live right now. So if you like to join her, she will be with me next week, by the way. So uh, tomorrow, folks, um, uh, we uh, are going to uh, have our live stream with Sam Shimon at 6 p.m. New York Times. Uh, and then on Saturday, we'll have the testimony of the Somali husband of uh, Sister Shania. Uh, it will be at 8 p.m. UK time, uh, 3 p.m. New York time. And on Sunday, we have a surprise apologist. We'll talk about the topic of the transmission of the Bible. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless you. This is Al Fadi. Over and out. Take God care. Bless.